Hey everybody, it's Jennifer Terrell, your 4-H agent for the Southwind District. And again, it is February, and so that means it is Bake for Family Fun Month. So we are doing special recipes for this entire month, highlighting different topic areas. And so this week is um, pet treats, and so we've found a couple different things for you to do for pets. Um, most of the recipes are for dogs, and so it's kind of hard to find something that would be good for other pets. And so I went a little unusual, but we are going to do um, treats for donkeys and horses. So we are going to get started. Okay, so the ingredients for today, you will need one cup of molasses, one large carrot, a large apple, two tablespoons of oil, two and a half cups of old-fashioned oats, and that is it. But some other utensils you'll want to have, um, of course you'll need your measuring cups to measure out these oats. Um, this is a one cup, and so molasses is one cup. That bowl is one cup anyway. And then you'll need a large bowl to mix everything into. And then you'll want a grater because you'll see what we'll do here in a minute. So I have that to shred. And then we have a spatula. And then we also have a greased nine by 13 baking pan. So let's get started. Um, the first thing that I need to do is shred the carrots uh, or the carrot and the apple. Okay, so I have shredded the large apple and the large carrot and I've done that into my large bowl. So this is quite messy. As you can see, I have carrot and apple everywhere. So make sure that you're wearing an apron um, because it will get messy. And also when you're using a grater, those blades can be very sharp. So when you're doing this with the family, make sure that um, you adults are helping with the process and teaching them good education about how to use a grater properly. So, um, and because it takes so long, I didn't wanna um, bore you with me grading those items. So they are already done here and you can see my apples starting to brown, so I need to move pretty quickly. But now we're gonna combine everything else. So we have our two and a half cups of um, old fashioned oats that we're going to add into the mix. Okay, and then we are going to add our molasses. And so we do have one cup and this container is one cup. And you can see, look, I got a carrot or an apple in there. I think it's an apple. It's, it's super messy. So make sure you're careful when you are doing this process. And then we are gonna add the molasses into the bowl. Molasses is super sticky. So I may have to scoop some of that out here in a second. Okay, then we will add our two tablespoons of oil. And before we really start to mix, um, we wanna make sure that we have already preheated our oven. So you could do that now um, if you wanted to. I set mine for 350, the recipe suggests 400, but I know that my oven varies, so um, that's why mine set at 350. But I will go ahead and we'll mix all of this up and I will show you what we do next. Okay, so the um, ingredients are all mixed together pretty well. And so then the next step is to place it in to this nine by 13, greased nine by 13. Okay, so now we have the mixture into the pan. And it smells so good, by the way. Depending how thick um, the mixture is for you, mine's a little liquidy because of the um, apple. My apple was really juicy, so um, it, might, it might be easy to mix and get out of the pan or out of that large bowl into this pan but um, just be careful when you're doing it. But so we get it all you know, laid out. And 
If um, your mixture comes out really thick because of the molasses, you want to make sure that you use a metal spoon to help press down um, all of the ingredients because it'll come, it'll not stick as bad if you're using a metal spoon. Okay, we are ready um, to get it thrown into the oven. And see, so you can see our little apples and our carrots throughout. And it does take quite a bit to mix those really thoroughly, so just a fair warning. So they will now go into our oven, which should be preheated now. And we will put them in there for 40 minutes or until they get uh, crispy. And then we will tune back in. Okay, here's the finished product. Uh, it just needs to cool for a little bit. I just pulled it out of the oven. Make sure that you are watching and checking on this um, treat because sometimes at the edges it could get a little bit um, burnt or overdone. So make sure you're just checking periodically. After this cools for a while, we'll break it apart and we can put it into a Ziploc bag and feed it to our horses or um, donkeys. Uh, the lady who shared this recipe also mentioned that her goats love it too, but um, the main important thing I want you to know is before you DIY this recipe, make sure that you check with um, your local vet to make sure that this is something that you can give your pet because depending on uh, circumstances, it may not be something that you want to give your particular animal. So, Okay, that concludes our recipe for this week for the donkey horse treat. So make sure, like I said earlier, that you check to make sure that's something that you could give to your animals. Um, just visit with a vet. Also, um, I'm glad you watched to see what we are doing for Bake for Family Fun Month. This is a fun recipe uh, to make with your family. Um, so make sure that you're doing things together. Also, um, tune in next week. We'll have some additional recipes for this topic as well. But we focused on pet treats because February 20th is love your pet. So sh show some love to your pets. See you later.